Hey, what's up guys? Chris Journey here for Chris Core Productions. Welcome to episode two of Get the Film Look. Today, we are talking about color. We see color every day. Colors can be used to sell things to us, to make us feel a certain way, and guide our eyes in ways that we may not even consciously notice. This is why, as a visual storyteller, it is extremely important to understand color and all the different ways that it can be used as a storytelling device. Used the right way, color can define your film, and in some cases, it can even progress the story on its own. There's a ton that can be said about color, and this video will probably just scratch the surface. But for today, we're gonna to be covering the following. Color schemes and establishing a color palette. The quality of color and how you can use that to add graphic weight, which on its own is something that we will also be talking about today. We're gonna to see how value, hue, and saturation can and help us establish a tone. We're probably just gonna scratch the surface, but all this stuff is gonna be super interesting and it might be even just an open door for you to wanna to explore more on your own. Now, if this is your first time on this channel, this is a filmmaking channel, but don't worry, if you come from any other artistic background, you can still follow along because these color theory concepts that we're gonna be exploring today can be applied to pretty much any visual art form. If you've ever seen any of this guy's videos, you'll know that he always starts his video by showing you and naming every color that he's going to use. Tell you what, let's start out today and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And I think we'll just do a happy little picture. That is his color palette. Those are the only colors he'll need to create an image with the lighting and mood that he wants. Now, if you don't know who this man is, fix that. His name is Bob Ross, and you can find his stuff on YouTube and Netflix. And it is just, I mean, the man is just like a loving, heartwarming, amazingly talented person. He passed away, unfortunately. All right, I am digressing way too much, but the point that I'm trying to make is that just like a painter, you wanna make conscious decisions of your choice of color. So how do we come up with an effective color palette? Well, that is where color theory comes in. The basic rundown is this. You have some colors that go well together and some that don't. Now, typically you want the colors to go well together. You want the colors to harmonize and you wanna create a pleasing image. But a lot of times there are a ton of exceptions to that. I mean, you can create discord with thin colors to bring attention to a certain part of your image, a certain object, uh, create tension. But for now, let's just focus on some basic color schemes of just some combinations that have worked well and that work well um, with audiences and people find them pleasing to look at. Now, before jumping into that, I I kind of need to mention what the color wheel is. A color wheel is pretty much composed of your three primary colors, which is yellow, red, and blue. And then uh, you can mix those together to create secondary colors, and then you can mix those secondary colors with the primary colors to make even more colors, and you got a full color wheel. None of that really matters for what we're trying to do, but it's, it's good to know, because we're gonna be referencing back to this quite a bit. So now that we have this color wheel, let's break down the colors individually. Now the first piece of information that we can look at in a color is the hue. Now hue is pretty much what we talk about when we talk about colors most of the time. So when we're saying blue, when we're saying red, that is the hue of the color. So I guess it's just another word for color, but not really. <laughs> Hope I'm not gonna make this confusing because it's really not. Saturation um, is pretty much how vibrant that color is, how far from being washed out white it is. So fully saturated color is something like that and a less saturated color is something like that. And then you have your value, which is essentially how bright it is. Um, this might have different terms. You might've already seen these terms in color grading and color correction, but essentially that's all you have to know. Hue is pretty much what color it is. Uh, value is how bright, how luminant is that color, and saturation is pretty much how vibrant, uh, how rich uh, is that color. So the first color scheme that we're gonna be taking a look at is complementary. Now a complementary color scheme is essentially whenever you pick two colors on the color wheel that are opposite of each other. And this creates for a very nice contrast, it creates a nice, pleasing image to the eye. It's used a ton in a ton of movies. It's probably one of the most uh, typical color combinations that you will find. Blockbuster movies love this. Transformer, all the Transformer movies are uh, uh, such a 
obvious example of complementary colors. I mean, you have the opposite uh, orange and teal look, which is a very popular blockbuster look. But that's pretty much the main thing about complementary colors. You have two colors that complement each other, but being opposite on the color wheel, and that creates contrast, and that usually creates for a beautiful image. Now, the thing about color schemes is that you usually want to pick a dominant color and then a secondary color to support your scene and maybe like a third color to highlight. So keep that in mind because whenever you're picking colors, choosing a color scheme or a color palette, you don't have to spread out every color evenly in your shot. There could be a dominant color that's more prevalent in your, in your shot, it could be your overall background color, and then you can have your subject, which is a different color. But you can see how there is a dominant color and then there is a color that supports the scene. So you can use this effectively to highlight certain things, to bring certain things to attention. The next color scheme that I want to talk about is analogous, and this is found oftentimes in nature, so if you have uh, a visual piece that tries to portray nature, they're going to use analogous colors a lot. Uh, and this is just a pleasing color combination to the eye. It's very relaxing. It's usually very comfortable to look at. And these are colors, these are a combination of like three or four colors that are actually next to each other in the color wheel. So that's pretty much how you pick out an analogous color. Next is monochromatic, which I think is a very interesting color scheme. Uh, it's not a combination of colors, but rather just one single color out of the color wheel that you can pick. And that's how you can create a monochromatic image. That is pretty much an image that doesn't have other colors, it's just predominantly just one color and uh, you, you'd be surprised how much you can do with just one color. Now there are other color schemes such as triadic colors which pretty much picks colors that are equally distant within the color wheel. So if geometry is your thing, if you put an equilateral, 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 equilateral triangle in the center of the color wheel and you rotate that wherever you want, you're pretty much always gonna get uh, a combination of colors that fits within the triadic color scheme. So to make things a little bit easier, there is a great tool from Adobe called Adobe Color. It's just a website you can go to it. They have a color wheel, you have different color scheme combinations, you can move things around, it's very responsive and you can play around with different things and just uh, get a different feel of different color palettes and uh, just experiment with color. So it's definitely a great way to start an experiment and uh, even establishing some, some looks through there. Another great thing that Adobe has done is created an app called Adobe Capture. If you download that on your phone, you can actually go around and take pictures of things and it will tell you the predominant colors in that image. So if you see something like a design or something in nature or just colors anywhere in life that you uh, find inspiration you can actually capture them. You can take a picture of them. It will save all of the color data in there. It will create a color palette based on that picture. It's just great. It's amazing. You can upload it to the cloud and it's there on all of your devices. So uh, those are two things that I really recommend you guys check out to just uh, further understand color theory. So two very powerful tools. I thought I'd mention them. I'm going to leave a link to them in the description as well as to other sources that I've gathered. I've gathered some articles and a few videos from some fellow uh, creators here on YouTube that have done an excellent job at explaining um, color theory even more. So now that we have all this information, we know what colors to use, we can create a color palette of colors that we like. How do we actually choose them to serve the story that we're trying to tell? Colors can have a huge impact on, on your audience, and this is where the psychology of colors come in. Now, within our human nature, we actually emotionally respond differently to different colors. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it was some kind of an instinctual trait that was given to us to survive. I have no idea, but it is there, so we should use it to our advantage. For example, red. Red is probably the color that we respond to the most emotionally. It actually uh, is the most striking color all of all the colors as far as the way that we psychologically internalize that color, where red can be portraying passion, can be portraying violence and gore, and um, you know, it's usually associated with something that has a very strong uh, meaning, something that's very striking. And you can use this to highlight certain things in your image, to portray certain omens. Uh, there's just a ton of different ways that you can use very strong colors like this one to really draw your audience's eyes to a certain part of your image. Now, I would love to break down every single color and you know talk about and explore the meanings of each color, but for the sake of time, I am not gonna do that, but maybe there will be a video coming up. 
I don't know, let me know. Let me know if you wanna see that and I will make that for you guys. But just know that every color has its own significance. We respond to it a certain way and culturally, we are actually indoctrinated to respond to colors a certain way. And this can vary culture to culture. I mean, Western culture can associate different meanings to certain colors than what I don't know, let's say China does. And I mean, we've seen this in The Last Emperor, which is an amazing movie and it was DP'd by Vittorio Storaro. And I actually made a video about Storaro and his choice of color. You can check it out in the notes. And I'm probably gonna make more videos about Storaro. I mean, his body of work is incredible. Definitely check it out for inspiration and how color can be used uh, in, in movies and how it can further a story. Another way that you can use colors as a storytelling device is using them to associate a certain meaning, a certain part of your story, a certain character to a color. So if you have certain scenes that revolve around that character that might affect that character somehow, you can maybe foreshadow it a little bit with, uh, with a little splash of whatever color represents that character. I mean, that's just one way of using it, but it's, you can see how you can really play with that. I mean, another way of doing it would be maybe having a certain color associated with that character, and maybe that color transitions into a different color and that could uh, that could highlight even further a certain character arc that the uh, character is experiencing at that point in time in the story. So you can take it all kinds of different directions but really what I want you to see here is that there are so many powerful ways that you can use color to really enhance your story, to really support and, and just drive the story further. Right, there is so much more to say about color and I wish I could in this video but it's getting quite long so I think I'm gonna end it here. I hope you learned something about color theory and colors and all the different ways that you can use them to improve your uh, visual storytelling. If you did enjoy this video please give it a like and feel free to submit any kind of work that you create following these principles. You can tweet them at me. Here is my Twitter account at Chris Coart. Alright guys thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Tree for Chris Coart Productions and I will see you next time. I'm so close to being done with the video. It is almost five in the morning. Just trying to upload this in time. I'm starting to use Snapchat a bit more, so if you guys wanna just see some behind the scenes stuff and see what I'm doing throughout the day, follow me at Chris Clark.